Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and sub if you're serious about the digital asset space and let's get right into the information today at one take uncut. So just to update you guys, this video was removed by YouTube. This was international payments, you know, big number divided by XRP, the number and, you know, circulating supply equals wow. And that was a quote from one of the first original employees explaining if we even capture a small part of all international payments, trade finance, remittance, cross border, etc., that we could see a very, very high price to sustain this volume so I just want to let you guys know YouTube is not explained why they just say you know copyright guidelines the last two times that it has happened I ask YouTube and I appeal it and say hey what am I doing wrong so I can fix this and I don't do the same mistake and they never get back to me they take the strikes and remove anything from my channel and make it all better but they don't really explain why so hopefully um, I can get some clarity I'm not sure if it's just an algorithm you know knocking some videos out or what but I don't feel I did anything wrong just like the other two times but I will be uploading this video on cinnamon the other platform so keep an eye on that all right so guys I know a lot of you are wondering with the stock market in particular you know everything going up down and you're like okay well why were metals dropping the other day that doesn't make sense crypto was going down when the stocks were going down shouldn't metals and cryptos act as a hedge you always say that and a lot of other people do too absolutely but guys what I wanted to emphasize in the last comment was there's margin call pressure. So this typically results in liquidation of assets short term because they need to have enough funds for anybody that trades, you know, on margin, on leverage, however you want to say it, they need enough funds so that they don't get margin called. So they might have to liquidate their other positions in, you know, gold in you know, crypto in order to sustain their other funds. All right. So keep in mind, last week was one of the biggest swings in stock market history like since you know 2008 during that time so we're gonna see again as we know the Fed pumped billions in the market once again last night we'll see when this ends last time I checked what was the Dow like in you know in the 26k it was up you know it was down maybe 70 points as of this morning but guys I mean these swings are crazy and as we know the developments are occurring and I'm talking about the entire global market because this is what XRP is aiming to solve and bridge all right, so let's get into it. So Cryptopolis sharing this. This gentleman, guys, is not a joke. 40 plus years of financial experience. And I mean, he when you just hear him talk, if you have not seen his YouTube channel, very, very smart, humble guy. So right here, doesn't this look familiar? You know, just replace the Fed Now service logo with the Ripple XRP logo. Now, I'm not saying that this is literally what XRP is doing, but it is fun to kind of imagine he has the source, you know, the source of the picture down below. So just look at this. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see this whole screen. Hopefully it's not cut off, but essentially, so we have the originator and then we have external messaging and communication. Of course, notice how it's bilateral, just like on demand liquidity's whole service offers or, you know, X current formerly. And now we have the originators financial institution. And then after the communication payment and FX rates, everything's confirmed, they can switch. So again, just have XRP or, you know, the on ramps in between now fed now service messaging and interbank not intra, interbank clearing and settlement, all right, between the reserve banks. Look at that. That is literally finality on the core ledger, true settlement. And then back to the beneficiaries, financial institution, and then messaging. It is really, really cool that they're seeing this. We know that Ripple's also acted kind of as a consultant in this blockchain space. And, you know, overall, it's, you know, more so a payments company that utilizes blockchain infrastructure. Nonetheless, I thought that this was pretty cool to see, especially with all the things going on, and we'll explain. Woo. All right, right here, King Solomon. And guys, um, so people are coming back with a puppy today, so I'm trying to knock this video out before the house gets noisy. But all right, King Solomon here, XRP underscore owl, definite follow on YouTube and Twitter. So we got banks, governments, and financial institutions know that XRP is the true solution. Old documents show this is proof, of course, referring to, you know, all the proof of concepts, the trials, and of course, being connected with some of the top banks in the world. New documents show, and here's in quotes, liquidity, building, and rail expansion. Of course, you know, emphasis like I do on, you know, real-time payments, real-time growth settlement, anything with that type of vernacular. No other digital assets compare. And this gentleman's done tons of research. You know, we know the actual cryptos that are being integrated. We know, you know, Ethereum. We know XRP. But there's, it's not like there's like 50 of them. There really are maybe, you know, 10 or so that we see on a daily basis in, you know, government documents. No other digital assets compare. CBDCs, central bank digital currencies to rule internally, the walled gardens, but then XRP is the external global liquidity bridge to bridge all of this value. Boom. 
All right. And he goes, you know, keep them on the fence, ready to sell, insert false pretenses, inflated hopes, draft up court cases when most digital assets already fall under securities laws. And it really wouldn't make a difference. I mean, besides on the business side of them for Ripple, keep expanding partnerships with the company, not the asset, open government doors, open FI doors, sell and we are richer. It's all a game. And it is. And it's a psychological game. I think it's working on a lot of people. Um, personally, I'm excited to look back and see who actually held, who actually understood and didn't just watch you. YouTube and didn't just scroll through Twitter and actually took initiative to do their own research and saw it for themselves. I don't have time to answer every single comment that's FUD or, you know, a silly question I get on Twitter saying, you know, what's your opinion on this? What's your opinion on this? I wouldn't be able to make videos if I had to respond to, you know, three paragraphs to every question. All right, right here, Matthew Linney, L-I-N-Y, Bank of International Settlements on the Future of Securities Settlement. So, I mean, obviously, securities are a big concern as well, but a big topic of discussion with STOs as well. DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology, could revolutionize the space, could, it, it, it will, it already is today. Tokenization of securities, all right, with all these STOs, will be massive, especially with these platforms, whether it's Ethereum, Cardano, Tezos, you name it. The conversion of financial assets into digital tokens could transform the clearing and settlement of securities trades. Those are the key words, guys. So again, as you can see in these pictures shared by Matthew, same thing, um, just key takeaways to look into, settling transactions, account-based systems, and seeing how they're interacting, you know, standards, messaging, interoperability, reduced cost, complexity, keeping things simple, all the, you know, same things. All right, we can see the OECD 2020. You can see, you know, DLT permits automation. Everything that we've been talking about for, you know, the past several years, honestly. All right. Next up, King Solomon sharing this. So the Federal Reserve Bank Fed ACH platform modernization this year. Testing will be in mid-2020. And here's some quotes from this actual thing. And this is just full speculation, but just showing that we are moving towards, you know, updating the payment platforms, the networks, you know, Fedwire, you name it. All right. These reserve banks are developing their own. They're going digital. There should be no doubt about that. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, digital or fiat, but I'm showing that we are moving towards a digital economy, whether it's fiat or digital XRP can still bridge those. It doesn't matter. But I just want to show you how exciting this really is and how we'll be closer to tokenizing everything else that we kind of went over in that one video talking about tokenizing currencies equities commercialized real estate it's just coming on a daily basis so testing mid 20 a more distributed processing infrastructure okay there's not going to be a central point of failure in dominance all right it's not centralized new and improved so i mean it, it still will be to an extent but it's a more distributed rather than 100 percent centralized New and improved transactions and information services. Prepare for future needs of United States payments. 2007 Fed ACH equals 37 million transactions or 58 billion per day. Speculation. If you guys want to see these, again, we always have, he always provides the source and some screenshots and some, everything's highlighted. So it's really nice. So feel free to pause the screen. Yeah, look at this. Fed ACH valued at nearly $2.7 trillion in the same year. That's crazy. All right. Next up. Right here, Cryptic Poet just sharing this. So Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, he'll be actually speaking at the DC Blockchain Summit in DC on March 11th to the 12th. So that will be literally next week. So pretty cool to see that. I like how his picture's right there. Um... Yeah, I mean, typical. You shouldn't be surprised by this. There's going to be a lot of other groups. So as we can see, Cisco is here as well. I'm sure, you know, Microsoft, Azure, things of that nature. All right, right here, Michael Vell, five links. Germany's financial regulators have released guidelines classifying cryptocurrency, crypto assets, as they say, as financial instruments. Hmm. So it seems like they're almost tools that they'll be using, no longer the the bitcoins that we used to hear about back in the day, saying that the tech will, you know, that... Crypto will never be used, even though the, it's still needed to transfer the value on the network itself. This move further expands the definition of financial instruments to include all kinds of digital assets. Love it. All right. Don't need to go into this article. 
All right, and then right here, I'm going to finish off with this. This is a really good thread, guys. Just a synopsis of everything that's literally just occurred in the past 48 hours. This is by Bullish Trader 97. Definite follow here on Twitter, and I, I love these type, you know, this type of info. Everything, to my knowledge, is correct. So I appreciate you sharing this and you know tagging me as well. So right here, some significant news we've seen in the past 48 hours. Here's what stood out: Mnuchin. Again, meeting about cryptocurrency today. We got the G7 meeting today. Didn't state that it was urgent or that Mnuchin would head out until it was later stated that Mnuchin met about crypto today. All right. Next, we got the ECB European Central Bank ready to take financial measures along with the United States and Japan. And of course, there's all kinds of crazy articles and you know bullish articles showing Christine Lagarde on the cover with a big focus face. And honestly, I just kind of... I think this is all planned for a while, not to sound like a nutcase, but if you just, you know, read all the stuff, I mean, guys, I read so much stuff I don't talk about on YouTube and that I feel like I don't even want to talk about on YouTube because you'll get your channel banned, but it, it almost just seems like everything's just coming together. All right, Germany, G7 member, classifying crypto as a financial instrument. I've already said, central banks urged the G20 to back cheaper payments roadmap. Of course, we've been seeing that day in, day out. The IMF, WB, ready to address economic challenges. We got the BOE, Bank of England, ready to work with other CBs, central banks on this, you know, the virus, the V word, I can't say. And then the heads of the U.S. Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan, BOJ, one of the biggest banks, have told investors that the central banks they lead will take steps necessary to respond to the spread of the V-word. All right, and I'm right here in case you're wondering. All right, and then BIS, central banks will ask world leaders to back a roadmap for cutting the cost of cross-border payments, similar to that roadmap we just read up here as well with the G20. And then check out literally anything that BIS, Bank of International Settlements, has tweeted in the past 48 hours. And guys, I mean, honestly, I agree. I've been sent probably six things, maybe. All right, IMF, we will use our available instruments to the fullest extent possible, including emergency financing. Boom. All right, and then lastly, Britain emerges as near-exclusive buyer of Russian gold. I think I've shared, I actually haven't really shared a lot of info on gold lately, but just look, one hint, BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, all have been hoarding gold the past year or two. Notice they want to get away from the U.S. dollar reserve system. Right here, Boris Johnson will on Tuesday publish the government's battle plan to tackle the spread of the V-word, health, businesses, and the economy, and then Indonesia cuts Forex reserve requirements. So some of this is connected, some may not connect at all. Again, it goes around to policy, goes around to interoperability, make sure everyone's on the same page. And with something like this, whether you believe in XRP as just a slow and steady rise or you believe XRP as extreme recovery plan, Guys, we, we simply don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know if it's going to go up slow and steady or just overnight. But with something like this and how delicate the whole financial system is today, it wouldn't surprise me to see everybody kind of in cahoots working together, not wanting to move price up until they are ready to, metaphorically speaking, flip the switch, referring to mass enablement, utilizing and you know turning the volume on all at the same time. So that is tons of speculation right there. Tons. So take that with a grain of salt. But all right, guys, I appreciate you as always. Be sure to like and share this video since my other one got removed. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.